Hello, my name is Jan Thielemann and in this video I want to talk about a small little problem um, some of you might already know about but uh, for new developers in the IDMPR project this might be a little bit confusing and uh, so I thought I should make a video about it and um, what I'm talking about is um, yeah, event handling in, uh, in the ZK client, in the web UI client. And for this, I prepared a little example here. Uh, I have a custom form with a button and the label. And I register the form as the event handler for the button. Uh, and when the button is clicked, I want to schedule a new timer task, which is asynchronously. And uh, yeah, then I want to change uh, the label. So here, for example, I could um, use a web service and download something or whatever. Um, but I think you get um, the idea behind this um, because I now have um, yeah an asynchronous um, call to uh, my um, to, to change my label value, and um, this could be anything. This could be a timer task, a web service call, which is asynchronously. This could even be um, OSGI events, which uh, is really interesting if you are interested in sending and receiving OSGI events and then um, display something um, on the web UI. Or for example, I'm currently working on an asterisk plugin and when uh, I call somebody or I get a call, then I have this um, asterisk server listener and uh, it sends events to um, my desktop. So a little pop-up pops up and uh, I can see the caller number. And if I um, yeah pick up the call, I can see how long I'm talking and I can hang up the call with a little button in the pop-up. But um, yeah, that's to that. Now let's look at our problem. So here I hit the button and after two seconds, uh, my label should get changed and uh, as you see nothing happens <coughs> maybe because uh, I already tested this before I started the recording so let's uh, restart the server real quick there it is my form that's my button I hit it and then you get this error components can be accessed only in event listeners so what do you do um, now uh, the answer is um, yeah quite simple um, we schedule our own events send them so that uh, we can receive them in the on event method and change the label text there so first let's uh, define um, an event for this. So here I use a private final static string uh, and I call it on label label should change event. And here's the little trick. <coughs> if you create events and want to send them on uh, ZK, they have to start with a lowercase on. Okay, so um, this could probably be enough. So let's um, create the piece of code which will change our label. So if the event um, name, I believe, equals on label should change event then we use the data of the event and um, yeah because I want to change the label text um, for this I need a string so I uh, also check if 
the event's data is a string, so I can directly cast it without um, having headache about error handling. So here I have my string value equals to event get data. And here I set the label text to value. So now how to solve this problem? Um, there's a method uh, or a class called executions. Execution. Executions. Yes, for this. And it has this um, schedule method here. So um, here we need three parameters. The first is the desktop to which we want to schedule um, the event. The next thing is the event listener to which we want to schedule the event. And the last thing is the event. So let's start with the event first. Let's create a new event. And the event's name is on label should change event. Uh, it doesn't have a target and it has a data and this is our new label text. Okay. So now we need a reference to the event listener um, to which we want to send the event to. And this is um, my form. But if I would use this right here, um, it would send it to the timer task. So before I can um, do this, I need um, a reference to my form. So here I say final uh, self equals this and use self here. And of course we need, oops, this is um, um, my form. Okay, and we need a desktop, uh, which is also to be final. And here we can use, um, is it a get desktop? Yes. And is that k desktop, of course. Okay, so let's restart the server and see if I did any mistakes, if I made any mistakes. If not, it should uh, work right now, I believe. So open my form, hit my button. Ooh. That's not nice. Okay, so where's the problem? Ah, okay. <laughs> so, um, uh, since my event doesn't have a target and I want to um, get the target of the event to check if it's my button, yeah, I have a little problem here. So if the target is not null and the event target equals B and now we should be fine. Again, restart the server. Open my form, hit the button and the new label text is visible. Yeah, and that's how um, easy it can be. Um, yeah, all you have to do is um, uh, get references to the class you want to send the event to and a reference to the desktop. And the reason I do this uh, right here, um, instead of using uh, this method in the executions method, is that this method will return null if I would use it right here. So um, if I would say a uh, get desktop then it would uh, print null. Whereas here 
um, just outside of the um, anonymous inner class right here, um, it returns the right desktop. Yeah, and uh, this is what, uh, at least for me, was uh, confusing when I started developing um, for the web UI. <coughs> but now um, I believe uh, you get a better idea of how you can asynchronously send um, events to handle stuff. Yeah, so um, I hope this video helps and um, solves some of your questions and I see you in the next video.